Warning! The anime egotists have opinions about stuff and other stuff. Please understand this while watching the video and know that no opinion is a fact, not even yours. So please enjoy the video. Or don't. Eh. And welcome back to the Anime Egotist, the only place that you should be coming to for anime stuff. Just a reminder, please leave a like, subscribe, because a lot of people are watching our videos nowadays, but not a lot of people are subscribed. So please be sure to do that. But anyways, you got me, Foster, and I'm joined by my co-host. Say hello. And I'm Williamson. That's correct. And if you guys recall, a while ago, we did a video of anime arcs that kind of just need to be fixed. You remember that one, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just anime arcs that overall we just didn't really feel could have been better. Just overall were kind of disappointing. Yeah. It wasn't that necessarily that the, they were bad. It was it could have been that they were in the wrong place in the anime. It just kind of depended, so it may just be a repositioning, but uh, today we're here to discuss the best arcs in anime. Or more specifically, our favorites, because mm -hmm. if we say best, people are going to start to get all... People are going to get crazy about it. These are the best. Probably. <laughs> but anyways, I don't really have anybody to shout out this time, because every, we do have new subscribers, but their names aren't public. So if, you got, if people want a shout out, just put it in the comments and I'll let you, you guys know. Anyways... Do you want to start us off? Sure, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, so um, I'm going to start with this one, and it's uh, the tuning exams from Naruto. Okay. This is one of the best arcs this show ever produced. Um, you've just, I mean, you've got some of the best fights. Um, you get to introduce to all of the kind of side characters who will be a big part of the story in this part. Um, we've met some of them, but we really get to know them in this part. Um, you get, of course, kind of some hinting at that there are more people like Naruto with Gara developing through this. Um, you get, of course, what we probably consider both consider the best fight in the series, which is Rock Lee versus Gara. Yeah, that was a good one. And you just get to see all these different things happening. I mean, they make si them all sitting in a room taking a written test entertaining. Well, well, I can well, to be fair, I assume it was entertaining when we did it too, but it's not entertaining when you're the one taking the test. Probably. But they made watching that entertaining. So. Very true, very true. Not to mention we also learned that Shino is a monster. Mhm. Mm and that Shikamaru, even though all we've seen of him is him being lazy, that he's actually a genius. And you start realizing it here. Yeah, the only person who kind of got, like, chumped out was Choji, but they but they fixed that within the next few arcs they did for him. Yeah, and the, the only downside is the Neji-Naruto uh, fight, yeah. really, uh, yeah. in this entire arc. Oh, wait, that's right. There's one more person, Ten Ten, but they made up for... No, no, they they didn't. They nope. Didn't. I was I I say this unironically. The best ten ten was treated was in the Rock Lee show, and you can't even argue with me there. No, not really. I mean, at least she's a business owner now. That is true, but overall, yes, the tuning exam arc really was the arc that kind of told me that kind of told me this anime is going to be different, and it was awesome. Yeah. So I'm up. Go right ahead. Okay, I wanted to put so many different Gintama arcs on my list, but I'm just going to go with the one that made me feel stuff the most. The arc with Soguo's sister. Now, we all kind of know Soguo. He's a, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right, but he's hes a, hes sadistic. He's very playful. hes There's no real reason why, like, morally, he should be part of the samurai police force, but he's still an interesting character. And we also know Hijikata. He's very by the book, very temper, very has a lot of anger issues and all this other sorts of stuff. And they butt heads all the time. And we kind of learn why that is because we meet, because the main character, Gintoki, he meets Sogo's sister. And unlike her, she, and unlike him, she's actually really, really nice. She's helpful. She's polite. She does pretty much anything she can, despite the fact that she's really, really sick. One of the things I love about this arc is we finally learn why these two have so much history together. She actually is in love with Hijikata, but he doesn't return her feelings, at least at first. 
And it's not just simply because, oh, no, I'm just too cool for laces or anything like that. It's more of, I'm a samurai in a war right now. If I die while we're together, she's going to be miserable for so much longer. So he kind of shields her from that. But, of course, Sogo, as the little brother, doesn't really see that. He just sees, why can't you just make my sister happy? And they... And, of course, there's a battle between some uh, b- between them and some criminals. And Hichikata finally admits, I'm doing this not just to protect the world, not just to protect the town I live in. I'm doing this so the girl I love can be happy. He, and just hearing that from somebody like him who's been so closed off, we finally just get to see some genuine emotion from him. It's really nice to see. Sadly, this arc doesn't have that good of a ha- that much of a happy ending. Of course, we learn. Of course, they saved the day and everything. But his sis- spoiler alert: Sogo's sister actually dies at the end because she's so sick. And I, I can't even. I've we've spoken before about some anime arcs that have made us kind of sad or tear up a little bit. That wasn't this. I was bawling the first time I saw this arc like a baby. Hey, I like it was actually like <laughs> it it was brutal. Well, and afterward or she passes, we see Hijikata, the tough guy, c- crying about it, and we're just I'm just like, okay, if he can't make it through this arc, neither can I. But it's a fantastic arc. Please have tissues ready when you watch it. I mean, I haven't watched very much Jin, uh, Gintama. I only watched it when you had it on, and I was bored and didn't want to watch anything I was watching, so I would That's watch fair. it with you um but if it's the characters i think they are um then yeah i can understand why this is a good arc yeah i specifically remember getting food after that arc arc, because i just need a break and i was still kind of messed up about it i remember you knocking on the door or to my room yeah 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 and you were like you want to watch black clover i'm like yeah sure whatever let's do it (laughs) i don't even think you picked up on the fact that i was i was just like a baby about 10 minutes before yeah, eh, we never really talked like about that stuff. No, but anyways, one of the best Gintama arcs, but they have so many good ones, it's hard to tell. But anyways, what's your next arc? So my next arc is the Marine Ford arc from One Piece. Okay. Now, I'm caught up to the Dress Rosa arc. I'm kind of at the beginning of that arc uh, in watching. So if there are better arcs, that come after understand that this is what I've seen of one piece. That's so fine. Marine Ford, this is the culmination of the first half of one piece. Um, they've reached what is considered the halfway point, which is um, I think it, no, not Annie's lobby. That's um, something else. they reach whatever the halfway point is, get separated. Uh, but the whole part of this is that, Ace, Luffy's brother, has been captured by the Marines. Okay, this uh, is the, okay. I was right. This is the arc I was thinking of. And Luffy sets out on a journey on his own for the first time since the first episode of the series. He's alone uh, to save uh, his brother. And I'm kind of throwing in the um, Impel Down arc because I think they're separate technically, but I'm combining them. So he's he's running late. He frees um, uh, Jimbei from Impel Down, and then they escape and attack Marine Ford, which is the headquarters for the Marines. And Whitebeard, Ace's captain, shows up, and it's just this huge battle. It's all of the, it's like all the big people you've met so far in the series: the admirals, the uh, vice admirals, the fleet admiral is there. And you've got the pirates, and they're fighting, and you end up with, uh, unfortunately, okay, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched One Piece and don't know about this, this is probably one of the saddest deaths in anime. You're, you're, you're never going to catch up at this point, so you might that as well is just true. listen. You'll just, you might as well just listen to what we have to say on it. Ace dies. Um, he's killed by... Um, I think it's Akainu. Altig- Akainu. That's it. Okay. I always get them confused because there's so many different admirals. Yeah, Akainu. And from what I can tell, people still haven't forgiven him. The fans still have not forgiven him for that. They're just like, oh, you have a character development, all this? Nah, fuck you. I'm like, yeah, I, I feel the same. So, you, I mean, 
Luffy falls apart. It's the first time you pretty much don't see him either happily ignorant or completely batshit angry. The, those are like has been his two emotions. He hasn't been very cry, very much crying in the series with him. He is breaking down, which is which from what I remember, it's really sad to see that. But at the same time, there's part of the, a lot of the fan base has kind of admitted when they're watching the scene, there's something about the performance that's both great, it's tragic and a tad bit hilarious, which makes me wonder, oh, boy, it's kind of the elastic feel to Luffy because of how big his mouth gets during it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but um Pretty much at this point, um, Whitebeard goes on a rampage and pretty much destroys Marine Ford um, until Blackbeard shows up and then kills Whitebeard and reveals that he can steal devil fruit power somehow. Yeah, and... but doesn't Whitebeard, because you mentioned him die, like doesn't he, doesn't it happen while as he's standing up? Yes, he dies standing up. Um, I mean, hole through his chest, like this big, um, he's covered in scars and battle wounds and then his cape falls off and there's not a wound on his back. He hasn't, he's never once retreated from battle. Jeez, like that dude. Yeah. Even if he was still standing there, I wouldn't mess with him. I'm just like, he could, he could still be alive and he might like hit me or something. Mm -hmm. But no, even even I'm not the biggest One Piece fan, but even I acknowledge that was a really good arc. And it's like what well, like what I talked about with the Gintama arc. It's not necessarily like just the action. It's that there are times that it shows that, hey, just because just because we all root for our heroes, it's not always going to have a happy ending. And I appreciate that. And it this leads to Luffy realizing that in order to reach his dream, and the dream that was his brother's it, um it's uh to he has to get stronger so it ends with him coming back to ring the ceremonial bell that they used uh for when people die and they uh to be able to communicate with his entire crew that we're not getting back together in a in like a week we're getting together in two three years so i think it's two years yeah it's so this years. is the time skip so that's how they communicate that and leads to the time skip up for the second half. And then of course, all the characters have come back a lot stronger. Yeah. I can definitely vibe with that though. That's a really good arc. Mm -hmm. Anyways, my next one. Go ahead. Okay. The, I know you're not going to be able to talk about this one that much, but I'm going to say it anyway, the crash town arc from Yu-Gi-Oh five D's. Nope. Yep. See, anyways, so the, so a lot of people really like the Dark Signers arc because of just all the drama, the dueling, and just a lot of the story developments. And I think it's really, really good. But I also love the Crash Town arc that comes after it. So basically, Yusei gets a message saying, hey, can you come to this town, please, please and help out your friend? And and it's pretty much as vague as that because he doesn't know. who Like, who is this friend? Huh. Who is this friend? I don't know who this is. It turns out to be one of his old friends, Callan. Now... Callan was originally one of the villains of the last arc, a dark signer. Him, you say, Crow and Jack were all part of the Enforcers. They would fight basically fight against security and all these other criminals. Kind of Batman style, I guess, except with card games, which just makes it better. But one of the things with Callan is he's wanted to take it too far. Like, he was actually willing to kind of risk innocent lives and actually completely end the criminals and the police force and everybody else was like no man we can't do that we, we don't want to sink to their level so he gets arrested and blames you say and all the others he gets corrupted and becomes a dark signer him and you say duel you say wins and as he's breaking free from their control he says hey do not like fret do not blame yourself it's my fault for becoming so weak so here he is all back to normal ish in, in what was called crash town and he said but he hasn't forgiven himself he's like very broken up like i did a whole bunch of terrible things to you guys i need to make up for that even if it means my own life has to end at some point there's a lot of cool action in this a lot more than what should probably be in Yu-Gi-Oh. 
Oh, the villains themselves are pretty cool, and there's some plot twists and turns in it. And I love how, because we've talked about before how we don't really like how anime characters just decide well, I'm a good guy now, so I'm just going to do good guy things. No, we'd like to see characters redeem themselves, get better. And Kalina is completely willing to make himself a better person. And you say, hey, of course, everybody else shows up and they're like, look, what's gone is gone. We're good. And we even get to see Kalin's, like, Kalin's deck. And his, his deck is actually one of the most interesting decks in the whole series. He's just, to, make it, to make it short, it's basically a deck that it's at it's most powerful when you only have one card in your hand. Huh. Yeah. So well, they defeat the villains. Kalin kind of redeems himself and says, all right, I'm not going to fight just to die. I'm going to keep fighting for what's right. And they all become, and they all basically become friends again. It's a great redemption arc. The characters, everything that's done is well motivated. And it's nice to get some closure to this because when I first watched 5Ds, I never reached this arc. So, I never knew what happened to Callan, but it was a really... I'm really proud of how they brought him back. Huh. Yeah, it sounds like it would be an interesting arc. Again, I'd, I have, I need to go back and finish... I actually have never seen the very final season of the original series, uh, third and fourth season of GX, and pretty much all the five Ds. <sighs> yeah. You, and then you I can probably it. stop based on that, what everybody tells me. Yeah, probably. Although I will say you might want to watch the Japanese version of this arc because there's a shop that's called The Classy Ass. <sighs> okay. Yeah, there, there, there was no rhyme or reason. I don't even think they said, hey, let's go to The Classy Ass. Like, it was just a sign in the background, and we're all just like, sure, why not? <sighs> But yeah, the, the Crash Town arc is one of my favorites. I highly recommend it. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I may need to give it a shot. All right, what's your next one? So this is probably one you won't be able to talk about, and that's um, the Hideout Raid arc from My, my Hero, Hero Academ Academia. Yep. yep. All right. So this one takes place, um, it's the second half, I guess, or second part of uh, Season 3. Yeah, Season 3. Um, there, it takes place after their summer camp arc, summer camp training arc. Um, Bakugo, the kind of crazy, angry guy, is um, has been captured by the villains and is their and taken to their hideout. And the uh, the police force has been working with the heroes to try to um figure out where the league of villains is and they they've narrowed it down to this place and are about to raid the place they bust in and are uh trying to uh rescue him before and pretty much capture all the villains and then all for one shows up and teleports everybody away um all the villains away and bakugo because he's going to try to get bakugo uh to be part of the league of villains well, at the same time, um, a handful of the students um, are have decided to go looking for Bakugo themselves, even though they're not technically allowed to. Um, and pretty much, this they get they find a secret hideout that's different, and that's where the, uh, the villains have been teleported. And the heroes are raiding this place as well, and have an attack and it the building gets destroyed but all for one is there and he's the big bad at this point and is able to take out all the heroes and is pretty much just about to take either take bakugo's powers or um try to corrupt him somehow and all might shows up again from the first part of the arc and he um they of course have history um and so the students formulate their own plan they need they realize pretty much all might is fighting a defensive battle he's trying to protect bakugo and the citizens in the area from being killed in their fight but because that means he can't go all out it's causing him to lose the fight so here uh the students launch themselves into the air and um kirishima shouts down and they rescue bakugo and get away and then comes 
probably one of the best fights in the series and one of the best moments. Um, it's All Might versus All for One again. Um, and All Might is at the end of his powers. He's His injured body's giving out and he goes all out and releases what he calls his final smash, which is uh, the United States of Smash and destroys uh, All for One pretty much in the with like one massive blow. Did he have to hit a smash ball first to do it? Because no. when you say, oh, okay. okay. Oh, so he was cheating. Great. <laughs> no, it's, it's just an epic moment where he releases all the last bit of his power pretty much and defeats the villain. And then you get this moment where they're arresting him and he pretty much points to the camera and says, it's your turn now meaning two different things to the citizens. It's supposed to be, I'm still here. I'm still going to fight. But to, uh, Deku, the main character, it's, you have to take over for me now. I can't do it anymore. It's oh, that. I, I it, thought he was, when you said point out the camera, I thought he was speaking to you specifically. Like you have to do this. No, oh, dude, that would have been, that would have been, that would have been, I, I mean, been it's, that's how they different. film it at one point, but now it's, um, the news crews arrived after the battle and he points and can the citizens are like, Oh my God, he's still going to be there. And then no, he, but he's specifically talking to uh, Deku about it and saying, no, you need, it's time for you to take over. I can't okay. fight anymore. Like I said, I don't have a whole lot. Like you said, I can't say anything that much about this arc. I haven't watched my hero yet. I am not going to say I never will, but I probably won't anytime soon. We'll, we'll just, mm, see. I understand. We'll yeah. just see. Anyway, so my next, Go right ahead. Okay, the Saint Ishiyama High arc from Beelzebub. Okay, so the first arc I thought was good, but at the same time, it was kind of basic at times, both in a good way and in a bad way. But I really like this follow-up arc, because in the fight between Oga and Tojo and all the other delinquents, the school is destroyed. Now, some people might think... Oh, just give it an episode and they'll just magically rebuild it? No, that school stays gone for a good while. So they say, all right, everybody else, you're transferred into our sister academy, St. Ishiyama High. So during this, it's as because they're known for being a bunch of delinquents and rough students, they're not really welcomed by their, by their sister academy. In fact, but... I will say one of the main char one of the characters named Miki, he's actually friends with Oga and Furichi from back when they were kids. But they ended up having a falling out because it was one of those things where if Oga Oga fights a lot, duh. <laughs> uh, and a lot of his enemy if a lot of his enemies knew who most of his friends were, they would attack his friends too. So Oga uh pushed Miki away, saying, No, that's not we're not we're not actually friends, right? Obviously trying to protect him, but Miki still gets upset about it. So basically, all of Oga's old enemies, Kanzaki, I, Kunieta, Natsume, Himikawa, all of them, they're not friends at this point, but they don't hate each other as much as they used to. <laughs> they basically all have to team up against the the heads of the six the heads of the academy, because there's six of them. Um, it leads to a really awesome fight on the rooftop. Everybody gets to show off their cooler stuff. Imakawa gets to use his, I guess it's like a taser sort of thing. Taser, and he fights a guy with a wooden sword. Or Natsume almost, Natsume, Natsume I, I've talked about him before. He basically, he basically almost one-shot somebody when they're not even paying attention. He throws a kick at him, and he's just like, hey, if you're not careful, you'll end up just like that guy. Hey, and you'd think this would end with, a, like, a giant climactic fight at the end, but no, it ends with a game of volleyball. No, that seems about right for this show. Yeah, but here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. As they're playing, they get so many fouls and, like, penalties and stuff like that because they're being violent, and they're just like, guys, this isn't how you play volleyball, and they all look genuinely confused, like, wait, this isn't how it works? But no. <laughs> oh, as they... As the, the game progresses, they use their fighting abilities to help them win the dodgeball tournament. Honestly, sorry, not dodgeball, volleyball. Dodgeball would have made more sense probably, though, but <laughs> it's just a funny, crazy, action-packed arc that was... I, I don't know, but it's one of those things where if we've talked about oh, shows getting remakes, 
I'm not sure I want this arc remade, primarily because I think it did such a good job. I'm scared of the changes they could make to it. But overall, I'm fine with it. Also, we learned what Himakawa looks like when he doesn't have that big-ass pompadour. Turns out, he is a stud. <laughs> well, he's a stud anyway with the pompadour, so it doesn't really matter now, does it? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay, <laughs> mister. Or what's your... what's? <laughs> sure, why not? What's your next arc? What's your next so, one? My next arc is the Soul Society arc uh, from Bleach. This is the second arc. Okay. I don't know if you've watched that much Bleach or anything. No, I, a handful of episodes here and there, but you, like I said, just just go go for it. So pretty much, this one starts out with uh, the main character Ichigo um, running after Rukia after thinking she's leaving because uh, she's returning to the Soul Society with her brother and. Uh, just another guy, his the brother's lieutenant, um, and it um, pretty much uh, he goes after them and gets his ass kicked. Like he's so far, he's supposed to be the strongest character, and he can't even land a hit on the lieutenant, um, and pretty much loses his powers. Uh, so then the next part is kind of a, tr a quick training arc um there uh they go to i can't remember, i always forget his name um it's the shop owner um to train uh, i know he, he was he's the soul reaper and now he's a, lives in the world of the living and has that that's all i can remember about him and he trains there gets his soul reaper mixed with hollow powers at this point um kisuke urahara Yep, that's it. Uh, Yay me! And ends up uh, getting really strong. So then him and pretty much the people he's helped along the way, Orihime, uh, Chad, and Udio. Uh, and I guess, I think... Does Cone... No, Cone stays in the world of the living. So those three go to the world, uh, the Soul Society, to rescue Rukia. And that's the start of the main part of the arc. Uh, they break into the Soul Reaper um, part of it. I think it's called the Serete. And you get a whole bunch of really awesome fights with different levels of people. So you see pretty much they can all kick the butts of anyone who's below officer level. Then you see them fight like the third and fourth seats. So the low level officers of the different um, squads. And then you start they start developing a bit stronger and you start seeing like they're they're slowly able to change the minds of some of the people that as they fight okay remind like remind me is this i don't mean to jump ahead at all but is this the arc that ends like that a lot of people liked but and the last battle of it was like really disappointing or something or am i thinking of a completely different bleach arc i i really don't know um i i don't find this ending disappointing um Mainly because they pretty much get reach their goal. It's just, but the bad guys also win. So I don't know if this is that arc. All I know is it was like like one of the like one of the villains got taken out with like one hit or something like that. I don't know. That might be something. It might be. Yeah, a I think that's show. a different arc. Okay, that's fine. That's 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 all the input I basically have for it. But pretty much, you see, at this point, they, they've he's been able to change the mind of and some of the lower level officers are starting to be on their side and go maybe we shouldn't kill rukia I mean, uh, we don't we like her she hasn't done anything wrong she did what she could to save lives and even though that's technically illegal was it wrong when she did it to for a good reason yeah. and of course then you find out that the lieutenant of the brother actually has more history with rukia and they um he becomes an ally for them uh ichigo gets another power up after losing a fight or not losing but i think tying with the one of the captains i think is when it happens and then he gets uh his power up and then goes and fights the brother and it's that's the big climactic battle they're trying to he's trying to save rukia the brother's trying to let the execution happen okay and it ends with, of course, there's been a side story with Aizen, who's the big bad of the series, being 
having been killed by someone and then it's revealed no no he's not dead and he escapes with the hokioku i think is what it's called yeah. which was hidden in rukia yeah i'm gonna have i'm gonna have to give bleach a chance because it's one of those shows that i kind of stopped watching because i kind of thought you know maybe anime is not cool to like and then i realized i'm not cool regardless so might as well just keep watching and they're finally finishing the actual series sometime later this year so yeah, eventually anyways my next one go right ahead all right my next one and this one should be obvious the sasuke retrieval arc yes this was one of my uh honorable mentions oh d- ironic that you say that because as you were talking i did find two honorable mentions so two more <laughs> honorable mentions but anyways this arc is it's just brilliant even from the start or even with with sasuke getting pissed off and him and naruto fighting and kakashi showing up and basically and Sasuke's like, you have no idea what I'm going through. Maybe if I kill somebody you care about. And Kakashi's like, <laughs> yeah, you're too late. Everybody I know, everybody I love is already dead. And and first of all, I my guy should have shown up and been like, uh, hello, dude, or mine, mine, dude, you gotta do a talk, whatever. Or, but it, I don't know. Everything about this arc is just pretty much brilliant from the fact that they're showing off, off because a lot of people say. One of the things when they were recruiting everybody, Shikamaru said, oh, I'm bringing Choji. And Naruto's was like, really? Choji? Why? Why didn't you bring somebody like Shino? Which, first of all, if they brought Shino, that mission would have been that mission would have been a complete success. I like the fact that they're giving these characters who Choji kind of got screwed over in the beginning. Kiba and Nakamaru got screwed over in the beginning. They got to show up. But we also got bounced out with like Shikamaru and Neji, mm-hmm. two characters who had been... In terms of character development, they've done a pretty solid job of, especially the hilarious part of Sakura saying, take me with you, and Shikamaru literally has to tell her, you are too much of a burden for this mission. You have to stay behind. Anyway, so all the fights in this arc are really well done. We get to see the backstories of a lot of characters that we genuinely like. And it's Mm -hmm. another one of those arcs that doesn't end on necessarily the happiest of notes, which I do appreciate. It ends on a little bit more of a realistic arc. Plus, we get to see the Sand Ninja again, and we get to see that they actually have changed a bit. Gara, in particular, it's just it's just a really fun it's just a really fun arc all around. I will say though, the flashbacks can get a little tedious sometimes. Like it, it gets to the mm-hmm. point, it they go from um, explaining a lot of good stuff in the story to ham fisting it and being like, okay, guys, we we get it. We get it. This 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 person had a sucky childhood. Like let's let's move on. One of the biggest things for me though, I wish Kimimaru would have lived. He he was he was one of the coolest characters in the series. Yeah, we only got to see him again for a little while in the uh, when in the war arc later on. Yeah, that was that that war arc is would never make it onto this list. This that was but but overall, like I said, Sasuke retrieval arc. It's amazing. It's what it really should have ended Naruto oh, and just moved on to Naruto Shippuden, but filler. Well, they were very early on in Shippuden in the manga, so they needed time to develop. So I can understand why they wanted to continue, but maybe they should have gone on hiatus instead of doing a whole bunch of really bad filler, at least yeah. at the start. I never saw all of it, so I don't remember. Th- then again, we did get some pretty awesome filler anime openings So for Naruto, so I, I, I guess you gotta take the good with the bad. But everybody knows this arc, so I'm not gonna harp too much on the details of the plot and everything, so mm-hmm. please check it out please like i know i know it's cool to hate naruto now for some reason but please check out this arc yeah i mean this sets up the second half and it it it, if you watch this and then watch the final part of the final episode of naruto where they he actually leaves the village it's a perfect conclusion to the series where it's time to go and uh, and get and then you can go straight into Shibuya. You can yeah. watch some of the filler if you want, but again, we, we don't. You're gonna get that. a lot more. You're gonna oh, get a up. whole lot more. So, oh, Jesus. Let's move. Let's move on. All Let's right. What's your next arc, buddy? So it's time for honorable mentions. So of Is course, it? yeah, I, that was shit. You're right. Go for yeah. it. So of course, I also agree with the Sasuke arc. That was one of my honorable mentions. Again, I think the only issue I have with it is that it um, are the flashbacks can extend fights to a little longer than they need to go. So 
that's probably the only issue, and that's why I like the Chunin exams better, because the fights are really concise, but really well done most right. of the time. Um, my other, another honorable mention I had is the Arlong Park arc from One Piece. Okay. So, it, it's not got quite the emotional weight, but pretty much Nami had stole stuff from, uh, the crew and left them. Oh, this is, was this one of the really early arcs? Was this like yes. right around the time Sanji joined? Yeah, th- this is, takes place from the point Sanji joins to uh, pretty much the end of the East Blue saga. They leave okay. after this. Okay, I do. Then I do know this arc, but it's been like ten years since I've seen it, so I only remember bits and pieces. So pretty much, Nami's been working for a fishman pirate named Arlong to. She's trying to buy her village from him and uh, buy their freedom, and she's become a bad guy for them and. Um, he betrays her and steals the money uh, that she's been saving for the like the last 10, 15 years um, since she was real little. She panics. Of course, she stabs her own arm where she has the tattoo that marks her as an Arlong pirate and begs Luffy for help, pretty much. And you get the epic scene of Luffy, Sanji, Zoro, and... Uh, Oh God, Usopp walking to Arlong Park uh, Park to confront them. And (laughs) it's actually like one of the best moments in the series. Oh no, I agree. It's just, I just remember somebody did a meme of that where you remember Jimmy Neutron, of course. Yes. Do you remember the episode where he made all of those clones with different personalities and everything? Yeah. Somebody took the cool Jimmy walking, walking down the street and put him with, Put him with Usopp, Luffy, and all the other person. I'm just remembering that from yesterday. Oh god, no, but that, yeah, that sounds about right, and it, it's really well done, though. And um, like a good conclusion to the first part, it the ends with the them freeing the city or whatever the island from Arlong, and they end up. Uh, leaving east blue and you start you get the rest of the characters added on later but this was a good kind of end to the first part of one yeah, piece this is one of this is one of the few one piece arcs i've seen just about all the way through i can agree with that it's really solid yeah and then my final uh one that i'm going to do as an honorable mention is uh fairy tales grand magic games okay all so right this... that's not, not what i was expecting but okay so this one comes out of um, the right after the time skip, and this is, I think, the first. No, this is the second arc of uh, the series after that. Um, but this is, I think, the main one everyone thinks about, and that's pretty much fairy tale collapsed after the all the powerhouses were on the island and disappeared for seven years. Um, they're so those that remained have been kind of a laughing stock. All of their allies, while still helping on occasion, aren't can't, couldn't dedicate themselves to rebuilding Fairy Tale, and this is their redemption. They they go up against the best of the best. They're made fun of, but they show that they're still as uh, powerhouses, and that despite being gone for seven years, they haven't gotten any weaker. Um, Pretty much, and it ends with them returning to uh, the top guild as uh, they win the games in the end. Is that that's, it? Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I don't. It's it's a honorable mention. I don't want to talk about it too much. That that's fair. Okay, before I say my honorable mentions, can you tell me the anime or franchise that your arc, your last arc, is? Dragon Ball Z. Okay, all right, sweet. Because I didn't want it, my honorable mention to be your last one. Okay, hey. The Zophis arc from Zatch Bell. Okay. Okay. Hey, I want. I, this is an honorable mention because, uh, like, it, I don't know. It came through such a weird period of time where, it, like, half of it was on Toonami and half of it was like online because Zatch Bell was just kind of a mess in terms of scheduling and everything. Mm-hmm. Hey, but this is still a really solid arc. We get this villain Zophis who's like controlling like half the other Momoto in the world. But rather than Zatch and Keo being like, all right, we got this. It's like, no, let's let's get some of our friends to help us out. 
Let's get Kanja Man Fulgore. Let's get Megumi and Tia. Let's get all these other people involved to help us out, because otherwise we're dead. And the a lot of the fights are just really, really solid. I'll add the vo there's a good mix of comedy and drama because there are people like almost losing their lives and their best friends and everything. Complemented with Victor Reem, who does a song about eating melon. It worked. They made it work. <laughs> they somehow made it work. And it's just a really cool arc. One of the things, though, that does kind of bother me is, like, they're always saying, okay, everybody, rest up. We need your energy. Otherwise, we can't use spells. I'm like, wait a minute. There's, like, a limit to the amount of spells you could use? I mean, I understood the video games when they did that. But, like, this is when has this come up before? Like, Never. unless you're dead or the book look burns. Like, I, I don't know. But they had to nerf it somehow, I guess. But overall, it's a solid arc. Yeah, I can agree. I only remember this one vaguely. It's been a while since I watched Zatch Bell. Again, I keep hoping to hear that it'll be getting a remake or a, a continuation, at least in the English dub. Someone needs to finish it because it never got finished here. I hear, I hear the voice actors are all on board for it, so we're just waiting. Anyways, my next, my next one, the Team Flare arc from Pokemon X, Y, and Z. Okay. Oh my god. This... Oh my god, this arc... Here's the thing. It's an honorable mention, but it could easily just be on my actual list. So this arc is so... God... Oh, it's so good. But <laughs> all... every At first, when I first started watching Pokemon X, Y, and X, Y, and Z, I'm like, you know, they're kind of waiting a long time to do something with Team Flare. I mean, I like it because it gives the rest of the characters something to do that doesn't involve it, but at the same time, like, how much longer are they going to wait? Turns out, they wait just the right amount of time. The second that tournament's over, and everybody's mad about Ash losing, they're like, alright, let's blow up the Earth. Let's let's just take care of this. There's drama. It's not like a one or two episodes. It's a multiple episode arc. Mm -hmm. Bonnie and Clement, in particular, shining in this arc, because... We've talked about it before. We don't like in Pokemon when people sing. We really don't like it. But Bonnie's and her comfort song to Zygarde or Squishy, as she calls it, actually helps. Like it calms her. It calms it down. And plus, it's kind of her coping mechanism. The whole world is falling apart. People could be dying. She's away from her dad, her brother, Serena, and Ash. She's kind of losing it. Mm -hmm. but she copes with it by singing the song and calming Zygarde down uh, and I'm thinking damn this five year old girl is part of is handling this so much better than I would as a 24 year old I would be freaking out yeah like, it's... It's... not to mention Alon in particular he's like oh dang I screwed up I'm like well no duh but you, at least you, you realized it and, ch and had a character growth from it yeah, I understand that, but at the same time, I was kind of thinking, you didn't think anything suspicious of this to begin with. And I, I just want to, because a lot of people get mad at X, Y, and X, Y, and Z because they said, oh, it was too dark. Or, meanwhile, once again, that we point out, Diamond and Pearl had Hunter J die, her Salamance die, and Cyrus getting sucked into the distortion world, which we don't know about. If it has any food or any sustainability, he might as well be dead. But people mm -hmm. call out X, Y, and Z for being too dark. That's just hypocritical to me. Yeah, and it, it also, I mean, this is a really good arc. And the fact that it ends, or part of it, I remember one of the best, has one of the best scenes where all of the gym leaders and I think all the Elite Four and Ash and right. all, all the high-ranking or high-winning tournament members are all lined up ready to fight yeah and uh the less we talk about clam bot the better that i'm still i'm still not over that i i still talk to my therapist about that and then he asks, what about what's going on with your with your parents i'm like we'll get there when we get there just move on move <laughs> on anyways my next one the shinsugami crisis arc from gintama once again this arc here's the thing if part of me feels conflicted because this comes a little bit after Sogo and her and his sisters are. So we they learn the truth about each other. Sogo and Hijikata, they kind of become a little bit better friends because of it. At the same time, though, there's this other official named Makoto. He shows up and he's like, hey, hey, I want to help you guys in your branch in the Shinsugumi. Meanwhile, he's actually working for the bad guys and he's trying to start a coup. 
And ordinarily, you would see so oh, well be like, okay, I don't like Hijikata, but I do need we do need to work together. But no, Sogo gets Hijikata kicked out, which pissed me off a lot when I first saw it. And because I just like all the characters, but meanwhile, Hijikata goes to Gintoki and the others, and he's like, hey, I need your help. We got to take down this guy before he completely kills everybody we care about. And they're all just like, ah, fine, whatever. Whatever. We don't like you cops, but we'll just, we'll just do it regardless. And one, and while I did hate Sogo for all the stuff he did, it, their boss, boss, the head, Kondo, as soon as he's about to, he's about to be killed by Makoto and some of the other members who have turned against him, and Sogo shows up and be like, get the hell away from him. And we, because we kind of learned that despite being a sadistic asshole, he does care here about his fatherly figure. He doesn't want anything to happen to him. And he turns downright terrifying when something happens. There are a lot of cool fight scenes. And of course, in the end, the villains double cross Makoto and be like, no, this isn't, this isn't how it's going to work. This is, you're, you're going to die with the rest of them. He ends up losing one of his arms arms and at and as soon as he's about to fall kondo's like no you might have been a traitor but you're still part of this family which he's a better man than me i would have let him fall i would just been like all right see see ya wait grab on to something with your arm oh wait you can't because your arm's gone i would have said that but he's a he's a better man than i am and ultimately we get one of the best lines from gintoki in a fight because he says i don't care what happens to the rest of the world the only thing i care about is protecting my friends which is a great which is a really good philosophy to have. And in the end, you think, oh, well, they're just going to settle everything and it's going to be peaceful. But no, Makoto is, is bleeding out and about to die. And he and Hijikata have a duel to end it. And everyone's like, wait, why are they having a duel? It's like, well, it's because he doesn't want to die as a traitor. We don't want to leave him to die because he does start to help them. And he wants to die as a member of the group. They have their duel. Makoto dies saying thank you. It's heart-wrenching, to say the least. Yeah, for a comedy show, based on what the arcs you tell me that are the best, I mean, if these two are the best arcs in Gintama, those sound like the most heart-wrenching arcs oh. this series has to offer. Oh, dude, there are so many hilarious ones that could make my list, but th these are just the easiest to talk about. Not to mention your character, Yamazaki, it almost looks like he dies at some point, but turns <laughs> out one of, the, one of the villains is like, actually, no. I like your competitive spirit. I'm going to let you live. And they have a funeral, and Yamazaki's like, oh my god, do I poke my head back in? Because it'd be awkward to show up at my own funeral. Turns out they had a funeral for someone's dog instead. They value someone's <laughs> dog over Yamazaki. I'm like, that's sad, but <laughs> that's also hilarious. Yeah. All right. Are we ready for the final ones? Yes, we are. Hit, with, hit me with it, brother. All right. So mine... Um... Final really good arc. Again, these aren't in any particular order, so uh, we these are just our favorite arcs, pretty much. Okay. And this is the Cell arc from Dragon Ball Z. Okay, let's... <sighs> I love this arc, but I do have my issues with it. But continue, it's your, it's your list. This is kind of what should have been the end of Dragon Ball Z. We should have gotten another series that could take place that has the Boo arc, but... This is where DBZ should end should have ended because this was um, pretty much the passing of the torch. Um, I'll, I'll go back to the um, Android saga for or Android arc first, um, and it's so you get the first two androids. I think it's nineteen and twenty. Is that that's correct? Yeah, and then um, who in the real life were made fun of because of their weird designs. Um, which led them to releasing, coming up with um, 17 and 18, which just looked kind of normal. Yeah. Um, but kind of made the whole thing convoluted, the storylines. Yeah, a little so bit. So they re then reveal, oh, there's also 16. And then they also reveal that oh but the uh pre-ultimate uh android is actually cell which to be honest was a good move i don't think android 13 being the villain of this arc would have worked i mean look at this trucker hat yeah so you get this um 
pretty much a whole bunch of different fights. You get Vegeta getting coaxed into allowing Cell to reach his perfect form. You get, let Krillin have a, a moment where he's kind of falling in love with the bad guy. I still, I still can't stand that. Like, for like at least here's the thing: Vegeta letting his pride be like, "Oh yeah, I can take on Cell even if he reaches his perfect form." That makes sense to an extent. Goku late, later on giving Cell a sensu bean, that made sense because that helped Gohan win in the long run. Mm-hmm. Krillin was just an idiot, and it just it just frustrates me. It's just like, oh, I love her. I'm like, but there's a timeline where she kills you and everybody you care about. It's like, yeah, but... Uh, fine. And you get... Uh, the only part I really have an issue with this arc is that the power levels get out of control at this point they've they've yeah. been they've been, there's been a slow creep but the humans are still there and are still strong uh pretty much through the android arc the saiyans are again the strongest and then there's piccolo who's right below them but unfortunately in this arc it ends with the saiyans way ahead of everybody there's no none, none of the others can be as strong as them yeah now. piccolo's power boost that arc did not mean that much at the end so that's kind of the major issue but you get a whole bunch of epic fights pretty much i mean it looks like it's good at the end of the world goku who's been the main character up to this point is pretty much giving up uh saying i can't beat him gohan you get in there and you beat him and it, it becomes a passing of the torch moment where again i think dragon ball abridged does a really good job of goku realizing he fucked up at one point true true true, but he actually ended he let me put it this way he failed his way into saving the earth in a sense but yeah he uh he knows that pretty much he goes to the afterlife knowing that he's the reason that he attracts a lot of these people with him gone, there should be a good time of peace, which there is, and... Not counting movies, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're not t- necessarily canon. Who, know, who knows? They just remake them anyway into the show. But yeah, you're right. And um, Gohan is now the most powerful person, and it's a good Passover uh, that could have ended the... Um, for the second series, and then we get a third series where... It could have focused on Gohan trying to balance his work at, uh, or his life as a college student and then later work, his love life with Videl, with being the savior and the strongest person in the world. Yeah, but once again, fans turned on that idea and now they're suddenly like, no, we would have wanted that. I'm like, that's not what I heard. I heard the reason they didn't do that is because of fans rejecting it, but hindsight's a fun no, thing. For some reason, people really didn't like Gohan in high school is the second is that part leading into the boo saga so So, i I guess i don't know but yeah it's a great art despite my giving misgivings about it it's it has some of the Mm -hmm. best stuff in anime anyways my last arc go right ahead okay i feel weird talking about this arc because i know for a fact you're not here yet but the elf war arc in black clover i mean i know what about it so okay so basically the elves were mistreated a long time ago like the elves and the humans have had this thing going for this thing going for years they both hate each other meanwhile we learned the big plot was at the end it was all thanks to this devil evil mm-hmm. which sadly i keep forgetting his name and i don't feel like looking it up right now but but uh, one of the things about this is that all the elves are trying to get resurrected it it Damn, damn, I'm blanking out on this. I'm bl- Licht wants to re Licht, there we go. Licht wants to resurrect all the elves and basically take over Hoover. And the beginning of this arc is re- is solid because we get to see everybody go off and like, all right, we're gonna go train and get better, or some of us are gonna go investigate the Eye of the Midnight Sun hideout. Meanwhile, Ghosh, Gray, and Gordon, the three weirdest people in the Black Bulls, are all just stuck behind hanging out with each other. And we get to see that they actually, because they get invaded, but they actually do a really solid job of working together. And we meet the newest Black Bull, Henry, who I set, who has had a little bit of character development, and, but sadly, I still feel like he, he should be having a lot more. But we get to see what the Black Bulls are known best for, all working off each other. The comedy in this arc is really good. Everybody looks good. Like, Gray and Gordon... 
they make a part of one of my favorite episodes because they realize, look, we might be Gray might be super shy and Gordon might be kind of terrifying to look at, but they both still love their teammates and will do anything to protect them. And they're like, all the stuff we've been through, we're going to stand up for everybody. Noel gets an awesome power up. Mimosa looks good. Everybody looks really good in this arc, especially after the fight between Licht and Julius, the Wizard King, which is one of the most heartbreaking and awesome fights in the entire series. He's not to mention Yami can cut through dimensions. Like, that's amazing. And we get to see people get possessed by Elves, Luck in particular, having a really great moment after he's been possessed because he's he has tears pouring down his face because normally he has like the biggest, most psychotic smile on his face, but we see tear pouring down his face and he looks at Magna and he's like, I'm still part of the Black Bulls, right? And Magna because we know Luck and Magna, they're friends, but they mm-hmm. will tear each other apart on a day-to-day basis. Magna just pulls him in for a hug. He's like, you idiot. Of course you're still one of uh, us. And I'm just like, yep. <laughs> okay. I'm, 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 here's my manhood. I'm good. Just just take it. I'm, I'm, done. I'm done for the day. But this is a brilliant art. Just with the introduction of Sekre or Nero the Bird. Finral gets some good time to shine. Everybody looks really, really good for this arc. Also, just the open the opening theme songs. They're all they're all just brilliant, but that's every Black Clover arc. But this is just I wouldn't have minded if this was the end of Black Clover before moving on to like a new series or something like that. But the arc we just got done with was very solid too. Even though we're not technically done with it yet. Yeah, I, I need to finish up, um, at least through this arc. I know that it's all dubbed now, so I can watch it when I have free time. But, And I hear that this is probably the best arc in the series. Yeah, yeah, I did I did like the Royal Knights exam arc, but I felt like this one, like that was an A-level arc, but I feel like this might have been closer to an A+. Plus. But that's, that's just my opinion. I don't want to overhype it or anything, but it's a very, very good arc. Yeah, from what I hear, it's it's really good. I have again, I haven't seen this part, but I know what happens because I rather than waiting to get spoiled for it, I just went ahead and watched spoilers for it, so I know what happens. So, yeah. yeah. But as do we have anything else? Are there any other arcs we could? Uh, I mean, there's a ton of arcs we, I was we could say, go we, through. We could, we could honestly do a sequel video for this. People have been asking for some sequel videos, and we've been to- we have been talking about it. It's just a matter of scheduling. We don't want to do them all too close to each other. Yeah. Again, if we've only released an, one video already, we don't want to talk about it right away again. We want to see, let our tastes change a little bit, and having to go back and see what those older yeah. lists were. I will say, and this is this is just a prediction for me, I feel like out of all the ones we might do a sequel video to, I think cliches might be the one we do one the soonest of, but we, we still don't know yet, because there are a lot of cliches out there for us to talk mm-hmm. about. Yeah, and I, I would need to go back and see which ones we already talked about to, to avoid uh, duplicates. Yeah, absolutely. Like, overall, though, what are some of your favorite arcs in the anime? Any of the ones we talked about? Are there other arcs from the same series, or just uh, arcs that were similar or in other series you like that were just that were just better done or worse like just just let us know please and if you want a sequel to this one let us know we'd love yeah, and to we'll do, do one in like eight one. we'll do one in the, like at least eight months or something like that because we need time mm-hmm. anyways please let us know please let us know though please because we're running out of stuff to talk about yeah, we still have a good few. We just need to actually get around to making yeah. those lists. Yeah, I was about to say. I mean, we could do the Pokemon movies list, but we're we're still like I said, we're still talking about that, and I have some rants for some Pokemon movies that I've been saving for just just saving. a rainy day. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> but anyways, just let us know, and we'll talk to you guys next time. This has been Foster and Williamson, and this has been the Anime Egotist, and with the Anime Egotist. If you disagree, just wait for the time skip. We can't promise it'll get better, but just wait for the time skip. Mm Mm-hmm.